In this video, we'll go over some notations that are used for representing deterministic and non-deterministic finite automata. We'll start with this example of a deterministic finite automata. This is the notation by means of the drawing of a graph, with nodes for states and level edges for transitions between states. We denote the initial state with an arrow and the accepting states with a cross. The same automaton can be represented by a table. At the beginning of the rows, we write the states, and at the beginning of the columns, we write the symbols of the alphabet. For each square, we write the read state from the state of the corresponding row after the symbol of the corresponding column is read. For example, from state 0 with an A in the input, we jump to state 1. We use again ORO and CROSS to mark initial and accepting states. Sometimes the ORO is omit, assuming that the initial state is the one of the first row. We can also represent uh, the deterministic finite automata as a tuple containing the set of states, the input alphabet, the transition function, the initial state, and the set of accepting states. Here is the tuple that corresponds to our example. Recall that the transition function is a totally defined function such that each per state symbol is associated to a new state that is the one that is reached after reading the symbol from the first state. This is the definition of the transition function of our example. For simplicity, the application of the transition function is sometimes denoted with infix notation using a point or even without it. Moreover, the transition function is often considered as extent to any word and not only the symbol of the alphabet. Intuitively, given a state and a word, the transition function yields a result the reach state from the starting state after reading that word. This extension can be defined in the following way. Any state applied to lambda gives the same state. This is reasonable, since if we do not read anything, we stay in the same state. Moreover, any state applied to a concatenation of words gives a result the result of operating the state with the first word and the resulting state with the second word. This definition is reasonable since to know to which state we get starting from a state Q and reading this concatenation, it suffices to see first to which state we get after reading X and then see to which state we get from there by reading Y. This is saying that the transition function commutes with word concatenation. As a consequence of all that, we get this identity. With these notations, it is easy to define the language recognized by a deterministic finite automaton as the set of words that take us from the initial state to an accepting state. We can also define the language recognized from a concrete state Q as the set of words that take us to an accepting state starting the execution in Q. A language is called regular if there exists a deterministic finite automaton that recognizes it. Let's see now how we describe non-deterministic finite automata, also known as NFAs. Here we have an example as a drawing of a graph. Non-deterministic finite automata are more general than deterministic finite automata as we allow multiply defined transitions, as happened with A in this state or non-defined transitions, as happened with B from these two states or with A from this one. We keep on denoting initial and accepting states with ORO and CROSS respectively, but now we can have more than one initial state. A word is accepted if there exists an accepting execution, that is, if there is any path in the execution that takes us from the initial state to an accepting state by reading that word. Here we have the representation by a table of the non-deterministic finite automaton that we draw. For each state and each symbol, we write all the states that can be reached. For example, from the state uppercase A with input lowercase a, we can reach A and B, and hence we list both of them. In this way, we denote that no state can be reached. 